Hello, sweet friends. Welcome into My Sweet Home Living today. My name is Tracy Campbell. So excited to be here with you today for the next 45 minutes. I'll also be your hostess uh, crafter over in the Craft on the Clock group where you may be watching me live from there or my page as well either way or you may be catching us on the replay later on my channel My Sweet Home Living on YouTube. No matter where you're watching us from I always love to see where you are tuning in from so do leave me a comment below and chime in so I can see that you are here. Welcome you and uh, good afternoon Miss Karen from Tennessee. Miss Sue is watching. Welcome on in today. Welcome in today. This was uh, sort of a last minute plan today, and um, but I have a fun project I think you're going to enjoy. Hello, Miss Tammy. Welcome in. If you are new and watching today, hey, Miss Kim, if you are new and watching today, I would love for you to put a uh, new or new friend or new follower or something down below so that I can come back and uh, just give you a little shout out or a little welcome or a little hello in the comments later. Uh, I always love to see where everyone is turning, tuning in from. Also, before we go any farther, if you would like to have a live notification before I go live, usually 10 minutes before I go live, you'll want to click that Telegram, uh, join my Telegram channel notification system where I send out live reminders, letting you know, giving you a reminder. That way, if you, in case you forget to set a reminder on your phone, I'll help you a little bit with uh, sending you a reminder. You just got to check them. <laughs> All right. Hello from Texas, Andrea. Hello. Hello, Sherry Francis and Francis, Mrs. Francis from Bond and Silks. We have lots of creative friends on here today. So do please give them a look up if you see them down in the comments. Hey, Miss Kim from Yesterday's Tomorrow's. If you see them, check them out. We have lots of wonderful and talented creators in the Craft from the Clock group. We have Live Crafting Monday through Friday, early morning to late at night every single week a new creator is live every 45 minutes you guys we post a daily schedule in there so you can follow along but if you don't see something you like one minute check back the next minute i'm sure you'll find something to guarantee to inspire you to get creating hello miss Jeannie and lydia thank you all for tuning in so if you caught our live last week our most recent video you all loved it, loved it, loved it. It's even been uh, one of our popular, well, fastest growing videos over on YouTube, which we're still pretty small over on YouTube, but nonetheless, it's still gaining quite the momentum over there, is our little jar candle lights, our little primitive jar candles. Um, toppers intact as well. We created this from scratch, you guys. Did not buy the candle, no, we created it from scratch. If you missed that replay, go catch it. Uh, go catch it on the replay over on my page or on my YouTube channel, either one. It's there for you, it's there for you. Uh, but it's amazing and it's super easy project as well. We, I created one on uh, while we were live on air and then this one over here, I've got it plugged in. I don't know if my cord's gonna stretch much farther, but this is the second one that I created. Love these, tucking these, guess what? This even fits on my tiered tray, you guys. The win-win there, right? And then I have another one that's tucked in uh, my hutch. I kind of tuck it in that little cubby right there, but I pulled it off so I could show you guys real quick. In case you missed that, you'll want to uh, go back and watch that replay. I'm just gonna set that right there for now. We'll worry and fuss about the cord later. But I uh, love that project. I know you all get to. Hello, Miss Melanie. Thank you all. You're loving these ideas with the jars, especially seems like jars are so easy to come up with. I mean, right, spaghetti sauce, Alfredo sauce, pizza sauce, all kinds of things come in jars. And so I'm just making use of them. <laughs> and you all are seem to be loving them. So today's idea is featuring jars. We're going to create a three-piece mini primitive, sort of like a spin on a canister set uh, with some new techniques today and some new, new uh, little props. Okay, we're going to tie in some wood, very small piece of wood. Um, but I think you're gonna like this project. It's still in the same primitive style. It's gonna coordinate uh, really well with some of the other items that we've already created. Um, it's gonna coordinate really well with this uh, faux milk jar, jug, jar, whatever you wanna call it, milk glass, uh, that we created about a month or so ago. We're gonna use uh, some of the same techniques. We're gonna give it a different spin and a different spin for the top, but it's gonna coordinate nicely. We're using the colors black, white, and brown today. Well, not necessarily white, white. Nothing in, that I create is ever white. <laughs> uh, we do mix it in some coffee, instant coffee, and uh, really warm it up. 
Um, I made sure to be in the house. Oh, to catch us live. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. You all just make my day. And I hope in the, that you all enjoy these and um, projects. I've been getting some wonderful feedback, and so that just warms my heart. And so anytime you have ideas or uh, want to see something, uh, send me a message. You can message me on my um uh, business page you can send me a message and let me know hey uh, do you have any ideas for this uh, I may not respond back right away but I'll definitely make note of that uh, make a mental note of some things that you all have been asking for um, I've had a few ask about tier trays I've had a few asking about maybe some more in-depth uh, classes which I had never thought about before and um, so uh, those I'm just tossing those out if you all like those ideas spin them back at me and I will definitely keep note and keep track of what's most requested and uh, we'll see what we can do <laughs> okay all right so I am starting with a prego sauce jar I have a pizza sauce jar are you all seeing what I've got going on here and then I have a little uh, this is shredded uh, or grated um, oh my goodness parmesan <laughs> parmesan cheese i'll get it out here in a second grated parmesan cheese do you see we have a graduated set i don't know my camera's kind of tilted at an angle but they're all three different heights and so what i'm going to put together is a little three-piece little spin on a canister set so i'm thinking like a candy jar um, for something like this or this could be used something for like a jar gift for someone for a housewoman gift or uh, even a you know gift for over the holidays fill it up with some homemade hot cocoa mix and uh with this decorated jar that we're going to be coming up with so they have a two for one they have the hot cocoa mix and then a jar they can reuse later on so tons of different ideas that we can spin out with it today's project so stay tuned i think you're going to love it and i don't know if we'll get through all three jars today but i'm going to do all three jars the same just for my purposes, I'm going to have a little three-piece set. But I'm going to show you how to do one for sure, and we'll see how what time allows for us to do. We are going to do a little bit of crackling today. And guess what? Full disclaimer. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Jillian, for sprinkling us out. Hello, Miss Jessica from Jessica's Party Decor and more. You want to go check out Sweet Jessica's page. She is so talented uh, with coming up with beautiful decorations. Um, she's she wows me she create she had created not too long ago a beautiful gingerbread um, piece it was darling it would be so cute for um, a gingerbread Christmas themed uh, party oh my goodness it was so sweet all right so I'm using some um, uh oh <laughs> my paintbrush rolled right off I'm using some black chalk paint you guys all right I do want to give my jar a base coat. These have been cleaned. I probably should have wiped them down with alcohol. Did not do that, but probably would want to do that. Hello, Miss Tabitha from Oregon. Thank you all for watching. Hey, Miss Regina, you are so sweet. I appreciate you. Your comments, uh, sweet compliments are just warm my heart, you guys. We have the best follower friends here on this page that I could ever ask for. Uh, we are just going to give this a quick coat of black chalk paint, you guys. Um, for the sake of time today, I am not going to paint the bottom. However, if you were making this to sell, if you like to create things, sell them um, at craft shows, craft fairs, festivals, things like that, I would highly encourage you to finish it all the way around, including the bottom, uh, just for a well-finished looking piece. And I'm going to go all the way up to the very top rim of this jar. And we're giving it a quick base coat. If I see some streaks, it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt it. I'm not adding anything to this chalk paint. Usually you guys can sometimes see me add uh, instant coffee grains or even some coffee grunge mix. Not to this base coat because I want it real good, thick and heavy. And that is gonna give us exactly what we need. If we if we add anything it could thin it down too much so that we don't get that good coverage see how quick that was you guys oh my gracious lightning fast project i'm telling you we're gonna whip them out today hello uh thank you thank you so much hey miss bonnie and barb is watching from texas we're gonna let our little heat tool do some drying while we go ahead and add um another coat i've already pre-coated this lid um actually in our last live video 
I think I did that, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it one more coat because this lid, it is gonna be mostly visible today. We're not gonna hide it or embellish it with a whole lot. Um, so I do wanna make sure that the coating is nice and um, well covered. No streaks uh, or anything like that. I want a good, solid, even coat. And that chalk paint is amazing for that. So I'm gonna set that to the side. We're just gonna keep right on rolling and we'll go ahead and do this second jar. I'm gonna spin this around so the heat can get to that side. This chalk paint does dry super fast. Dries almost as fast as it goes on, you guys. So, let's see who else is here. Watching from Kansas, Miss Sherry. Watching from Northeast Georgia, Carolyn. Um, Miss Mary, uh-oh, Miss Mary from Ocean Breeze and Me. She has just recently moved to Delaware and she said Hurricane Ian is uh, visiting her today. I hope you are safe and sound up there and not getting too much other than just some wind and rain. Hopefully, hopefully he, uh, that has dwindled down, goodness. I know we've had so many creative friends uh, that have been touched by that during the last week. And um, I know they have appreciated your all's thoughts and prayers um, along the week. It's been a very stressful week for many, I know. And those of you, if you are watching in those areas and have been affected, please know you have been in our thoughts and prayers as well. All right, quick coat number two. All right, this jar is pretty much already dry. Jar number three, we're just gonna go ahead and whip it right out. And then I'm gonna show you, this jar has a little bit of um, a, a little design in the glass around the bottom, but it's not gonna hurt anything. I think it's gonna be just fine. Um, we are gonna go over this with some Mod Podge. We're gonna do a little bit of crackling. I have never done crackling intentionally <laughs> anyway so I am going to try a crackle method on top of this um, which will be interesting because we're going to tie in a little bit of coffee um, in with that so we'll see how this works it could be a total experiment and not work at all <laughs> so you guys will be along for the show today I can be your guinea pig and um, if it works we'll we will mark it up as a success but if not we'll chalk it up as a lesson learned all right i put that on really heavy probably a little too heavy but we might not finish this little jar on live today but either way we've got a good coat on there i'm going to go ahead and coat this lid really quick this chalk paint covers like uh, a miracle <laughs> these jars have some bright bold colors but this chalk paint goes right over it and i'm telling you, you can't hardly even see the streaks um, but this chalk paint is Waverly. It's, um, I get it at my local um, Walmart, you guys. Um, and it is really thick. If it's too thick for some of your projects, you might just water it down a little bit. You all know that I like to water mine down, dilute it with um, coffee grunge mix. And that also dilutes the color and gives a nice warm earth tone color, a good primitive color to my, my paints. And uh, you'll see me do that quite a bit if you're new to my page if you've never seen me do that before we do that quite a bit all right I'm trying to get this last little side of this jar and then I can clean my hand and we can move right on to the next step all right I'm gonna wipe my hands because this black paint I will have it everywhere <laughs> I will have it everywhere am I using chalk paint on the glass I sure am Rachel hey Miss Pat from Unique how are you sweet friend yeah, I am. I'm using it right on the glass, and uh, chalk paint is a really good gets a really good coverage on um, glass. It really does. Um, so I've got quite a bit of extra paint here before it dries because this is already pretty thick. I'm going to go ahead and put the bulk of this back in my container. Okay, I'm not going to have to put a second coat on my jars. Um, because we're going over it with a top layer of another color, a good warm vanilla, primitive vanilla color. That's what we're going to use on top of it. Now, how are we going to get that color? If you have watched, you probably can guess what I'm going to do 
to get that warm vanilla good grungy color oh my nose is tickling all right this is pretty much dry all right so while this is continuing to just kind of work on the side i'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my white chalk paint let's see here this is my white chalk paint that's almost empty yes almost empty you probably can't even see down in there but it's almost empty so what i'm going to do this is going to become my um this is going to become my chalk paint that's already diluted with my coffee crunch mix so that i can use it um all the time and not have to worry about mixing up a separate container um, i have a new a new jar right here that I have not opened yet so I thought this will be the good time I can kind of go ahead and grunge this color up and that'll kind of be my own little signature color <laughs> Hello. oh welcome Patricia first time watching welcome so excited you're here now the coffee grunge if you're new to my page you're probably wondering what I have in my jar it is my coffee grunge mix it is very commonly used in primitive crafts if you see crafts um, with, that are primitive style a lot of times fabrics and things are already kind of coffee stained or grunged this is not my specific recipe this is just something that's kind of commonly used and uh, widely known in the primitive style crafting community okay it's a cup of hot water a half a cup of instant coffee it has to be instant um, a two tablespoons of cinnamon and two tablespoons of vanilla you can add a few other things don't add anything that is sugary <laughs> you can add things like nutmeg or allspice or things like that um, but don't add anything differently other than that um, no sugar or anything like that because that could be a problem <laughs> so I gave this a good shake and I store this in my refrigerator when I'm not using it when I'm ready to use it pull it out heat it up in my microwave uh, for a little bit just to kind of knock the chill off and then it also helps me shake it up and get the sediment that has settled down to the bottom. Usually that cinnamon will kind of goop up at the bottom and kind of settle. So you want to get that really good and redistributed before you're using it. Uh, because that will help your color be good and even. And it looks like coffee, you guys. Now, this chalk paint is already pretty thick. So what I've done is I've just added a little bit. I'm going to shake this up and we're going to open it back up and we're going to see what it looks like. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Miss Cindy, you've been making things for your son's wedding. How fun. I bet that was beautiful. Listen, that may got me to thinking. Many of you have been messaging me, sending me pictures of the things that you all have been creating, which I love. I love it so much. But I do have a group. If you want to share those into, you can definitely post into that group. It's called All Things Vintage and Thrifted. Okay, um, so anything that you create that falls under those categories, whether it's vintage, primitive, rustic, or uh, something that you've created using a thrifted item, you are more than welcome to use that group. Okay, it is for uh, anyone that can post. Anyone that wants to post can post. <laughs> uh, and we monitor that group pretty closely as far as like spammers and things like that. We watch it pretty close. All right, so I've added that. It did dilute it. It is a little bit runny, but it's still not the color that I want. So you all probably know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to add some instant coffee. <laughs> I'm going to add some instant coffee to this because I want a good, rich vanilla. Uh, somebody suggested the color like vanilla mocha or vanilla almond the other day. And I thought, hmm, I like that. I like that. Not only do I like the sound of it, but the smells that makes me think of... Um, I think kind of go right along with this now I've added quite a bit see right I may have added too much if I did I can just always add some more uh, white paint to it now that instant coffee will slowly dissolve and give us a warm rich white color uh, yes you're right um, yes you're right Talisa does have power now thank goodness thank goodness I know her community her little neighborhood was hit really hard you guys and there are some um, some families some homes that are still without power in her neighborhood well I can't say that it did a whole lot so we're going in for more now it does kind of take a little bit for that instant coffee to dissolve so I could be kind of jumping ahead and maybe adding too much we'll see I'm gonna add some more 
you guys are going to kind of experiment right along with me today. I'm going to turn that heat off because those jars are dry. And um, we want a good, rich coffee looking color. Hear it. I think I hear those little grains. I don't think they have mixed in there very well yet. So we're going to let that sit. And while we're letting that sit, I'm going to open my Mod Podge. I'm going to open my Mod Podge. This is kind of goopy, you guys. Goopy. So I'm just going to kind of clean it off a little bit at the top here. This stuff kind of gets sticky at the top. Occasionally, just kind of take a baby wipe and go in and kind of wipe that down. All right. Now, what I'm going to I'm going to work on my big jar first because I think this will be easier for you guys to see. I am going to give quite a heavy coat of Mod Podge onto this because that's what I think what's going to give us our crackle. You guys, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> like I said, I've never done this crackle method intentionally. Oh, okay. We're going to give it a good coat all the way around. And it is my understanding that you don't want it to completely dry. Uh, you might want it to be a little bit tacky before you add your next layer of paint. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this really pretty crackle color with our warm primitive vanilla color of white. Then we're gonna add a nice black primitive star on the front and then we're gonna top it off. We're gonna embellish that lid a little bit and have a really cute little primitive jar set. This would be really cute uh, to put on a tiered tray. You could uh, put hot cocoa mix in them or if you use instant coffee, you could put instant coffee. You could put sugar in one. Um, all kinds of little ideas that you could go with there. All right, let me set that aside. I want this to, let me check my paint first before I hit that with a little bit of heat. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, we kind of have a um, little bit more of an almondy color, but it's definitely, that's not it. Let me show you, let me compare. This one hasn't been opened, so I'm not gonna be able to, yeah. I don't want to waste time opening that one, but it's definitely a big difference from what we had before. So I like that. And then we can, might even can be sprinkle it with a little bit of vanilla as well after we get it on. Okay, not going to dry this completely. I want it still a little bit tacky. So let's see what we can get here. It's my understanding as well, the thicker, the heavier that you want your crackle, thicker, the wider the cracks, the heavier coating of Mod Podge you want to put on. So we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, my comments stopped. Let me uh, scroll them back at. Hey, Miss Sheila. Hey, Dawn. I think it's going to be a really pretty color, and then we'll sprinkle it with a little bit of um, cinnamon or coffee grunge or something to kind of judge it up a little bit if it's not quite what we want. I like to see a little bit of speckles of the cinnamon um, and things like that on it when I've um, when I paint these. So. We're, we, I do it in layers, you guys. All right, I've just got a really cheap, chippy brush. Ooh, I love that color. Okay, love that color. All right, now, I don't know if I have this too, if it's too wet, too dry. I don't know. Let's just put it on, a, <laughs> let's put on a streak, and let's see. I do know that you're not technically supposed to go back over it. I didn't mess that up by doing that. Um, and it could be, I don't know. We'll see. Let's hit that with a little bit of heat and see what we start to get, if anything. <laughs> if anything, I have no idea. Um, if we start to see a little bit of a crackle, then I think we're good to, to go on and proceed. We'll see. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. I'm nervous, you guys nervous nothing like doing something for the first time on a live <laughs> um I, you think it has to be dry we'll see you might be right 
I've heard both. I've heard that it has to be a little bit tacky. Um, and then I've heard that it needs to be dry. So we'll see. We'll see. I think I'm, so, I'm seeing some crackle. I'm seeing some crackle. Okay, so our paint wasn't too diluted. Hold on. It's going to work, you guys. Okay, so if that's going to work, let me go ahead and put some more around the other sides before it gets too dry. We're racing against the clock here. <laughs> and I don't need to go over it too much. That is so hard to do. Okay. Did I get all the way around? I think. I think I did. Okay. Now, you know what I'm going to do? Mm. While this is drying, no, I'm not going for the coffee. Where is my cinnamon? I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of cinnamon. Just dusting it. Not that I want like a rusty appearance. I really just kind of want those speckles um, to show up. I like those speckles. Okay. 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 Oh, I went a little heavy there. That's okay. <laughs> I went a little heavy. That's all right. All right. Let's hit it with a little bit more heat. And I, uh -oh, see the little crackle bit right there? Yeah, it's going to let that black shine through, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So I think, I think we're good. I think we are good. <laughs> and we have 322 friends watching. It does. Coffee ice cream. Yes, you're right. It does remind me of coffee ice cream too. Uh, or like a vanilla bean, you know. Um, uh, oh, smells good too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes, Dawn, I think you're right. I think it needs to be tacky, which I think we're doing good because look, those crackles, the more we're drying, yes, the more crackle we're getting. So uh, if you're like me and you're a newbie at crackling, you might want to experiment a little bit before you just jump right in. <laughs> um, don't dry your Mod Podge out like, good, Cheryl. Okay, I think we're in good shape. I think we're in good shape. I am hitting it with a little bit of the heat though and I'm just kind of speeding it along because I want you guys to see this today before we're finished. Um, wow. How many of you have like old furniture or just old architectural salvage pieces that have a chippiness to them? I love, I love it when I find a piece that has beautiful chippiness to it. Um, and so this is kind of a good way that you can replicate that same look without having to, to look for something that's super old. Um, or if you have a lot of vintage antique pieces that have that chippy look to them and you want to add some more pieces to your decor, you can add these and they'll fit right in. All right, I am being a little bit careful. I do want to make sure that this is dry, but look, it's still, I've got some streaks on there, which is good and grungy. I love it. And I love that color too. Now I will have to go in afterwards and kind of clean up that top. I want this to look really nice and finished. Um, so I want to make sure that the streaks, you know, you can't see that my, I don't want to see that black at the top. I want to make sure that that's covered really well. Um, and I want to make sure my paint is dried evenly, but those cracks, that crackle you guys is amazing. Um, it does look like I may have let that, well, I don't know, it's actually crackling now. I was worried I may have let that Mod Podge dry a little bit too much on the back side, you know, as we were kind of doing the test, the test part. <laughs> but I think we're okay. I think we're okay. The back just doesn't look like it's crackling quite as much as that first little section. So I probably should have went ahead and did it all at once. But that's okay. This is sort of my experimental piece. <laughs> uh, look, you like it? Hey, Miss Cheryl from MNC Treasures. How are you? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful crack. And look, it's letting that black shine through, which is going to be good because that's going to coordinate with what we have going on next. So I have these little drawer pulls, any kind of little wooden drawer pull. You may have some um, already that you have that you can pull out and use. Let me slide this over because I don't quite need that right away. Now this is still drying. It's not completely dry by any stretch, but I am going to rush it along a little bit, okay? Uh, so that you guys can see what, what we're doing. Thank you, Miss Debbie. You like it? I think so too. I love that crackle. All right, now I have, these little wooden drawer pulls are so cute, and this is going to be the perfect size that I can add to the top of my little jar lid, okay? But I do want 
I want this to be mostly black. So let's give it a quick, really thin coat of that same black chalk paint. Um, and we will let that dry. It won't take very long because we're gonna do a really light, almost like a dry brush on that. Wish I had something to, like a little skewer or toothpick. Ah, oh, my fingers are too chubby. <laughs> too chubby, I'm telling you. Uh, all right, let's see if I can. All right, we're going to carefully. All right, that worked out perfect. All right, we're going to let that dry. Um, and that won't take very long. So let me set that down carefully right here so the heat can get to that while we finish the next step. Oh, my nose is tickling, you guys. I don't know about you guys, but it is harvest season here in Kentucky. And we are so incredibly dry right now. Probably the driest we have been, oh, in a long time. And oh, I did yard work today and there's, there's tractors, harvesters, Combines, you know, everywhere, all around me. You can just see plumes of dust. <laughs> and it's it's getting to me today. It is it's gotten me good. My nose just feels like I have a feather constantly tickling. Ah, more paint. Missed that. Let's get that off. Um, all right, that's good enough. All right. So now what I want to pick is I want to pick the prettiest side of this. That cinnamon, what didn't stick to the paint, I'm just going to kind of softly scuff off. Looks like a lot of it did stick really well. Um, I'm going to pick the prettier side because I'm going to add a nice little primitive star to the front. Is that not amazing? I love that right there. I love that look because I see the black. Now, primitive stars. Let's talk about primitive stars for a little bit. You see stars a lot in kind of the country primitive style decorating. The primitive star, technically, if, I mean, it, it's not like, we're not being like scientifically correct around here, but I just wanted to give you a little tidbit. So, primitive stars typically have longer little, if you think of a star that has five points, right? Two arms, two legs, and a head. <laughs> That's the way, I, in my mind, I connect with it. The primitive star has two longer points at the bottom, which are considered the legs, uh, what I consider the legs in my brain. But, um, so when you're creating a primitive star, you want your two bottom points to be a little bit more elongated, okay? So I'm going to freehand this. If you wanted to get a sticker, if you wanted a template or a stencil, you could totally do that. Will this work out? I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. But I'm going to freehand it the best that I can, and I'm going to start small because I need a, hmm. Yeah, I should have grabbed my small little detail brush. That's okay. I'm going to load up the side of my brush, and I'm just going to start small because I have a tendency of my stars getting bigger as they go. And then once you get your star, your basic shape, I would take a Sharpie, which I forgot to bring to the table today. I would take a Sharpie and outline it and then fill it in the rest. You know what I mean? Sharpie, you're not going to be able to tell. In between your chalk paint and your Sharpie, you're not going to know the difference. So we'll see if we can create a little freehand primitive star. And let me see what I can do. And then um, if it's worth looking at, <laughs> I will let you guys see it here in just about 10 seconds. Okay might have to call for one of my kiddos to help me out with a sharpie if they're listening they might help mom out they might not be listening though hey gray okay this is what I have so far <laughs> I need to clean it up hey gray see I need a sharpie please a sharpie a black sharpie Yes, there is. I just put some in the drawer, I think, the other day. Okay, so this little knob is going to go on top of our lid, but we're going to we're gonna fancy it up. Oh, let me turn it back around this way. Now, I'm going to create three jars that all have this same coordinating 
theme. So that's going to be my three piece set. If you have actual canisters that you want to repaint, you can totally do the same thing. Use chalk paint. You can find a, a, a thrift store, you know, set of canisters and do this same method, you guys, and it would be amazing. All right, I think my star is a little chubby. I knew it just keeps getting chubbier as I go. So I'm gonna elongate those legs. Probably what I would do if I were you, and hindsight's 2020, right? Um, I would cut out a little primitive star and use it and trace around it on my jar. And that way I would have um, a consistent star. There we go. I love that. I love it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do on the top. Now, let's go ahead and put this little lid on for right this moment. And I see where I kind of need to go around and touch up and bring that cream color all the way up but that's we're fine for now okay I'm gonna take this same um, I know I had a little sponge for you um, this little knob and I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on my sponge brush right here because I want the top of this we're gonna kind of dress this up a little bit it's not gonna be just a plain black knob I want the top of this circle on the knob to coordinate with my jar. Okay, so I'm gonna paint the top of this cream. I'm just very careful. This sponge brush is easy to control a straight line because you don't have those little bristles like you would on a brush. Okay, and then to the top of that, we're gonna add a little star. So it's gonna coordinate with the jar, okay? Gonna be so cute. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dab of hot glue on here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my jar, and then I can dry it. After it sits there, make sure I have it centered. This little jar has a nice little. Um, my goodness, I had a little dab of paint back here that wasn't completely dry, so I've smudged it. That's what I get for rushing it. Take your time. <laughs> take your time. I should take my own advice, right? All right, let's get that little glue string off because we don't want to heat that on there. Okay, this is going to be cute. Got to be so cute. Oh, I just touched that black paint, didn't I? Let's dry that right now. <laughs> Let's dry it right now. Okay, now if you have any black homespun, that would be, this would be the time to bring it in. I do not have any. I need to get me some. But this would look adorable, absolutely adorable with a little strand of black homespun tied around the top. I'm probably gonna see, I have some cheesecloth, but I don't know if the cheesecloth is gonna be the right color for it. A little, fabric tear strip of, of um, homespun is what it needs for sure. All right, now I'm going to use my little Sharpie to make the little star on the top of this, but let me give you a close up. There, is that not cute? You can see the crackle. Now you see around the top of my jar, I needed to take that vanilla paint all the way up around, okay, and to hide that, to make that solid. But now that's where you could use your fabric strip of cheat or uh, homespun fabric around the top and tie it off and it would be so cute. It would have that as well. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little prim star on the top of this knob. All right. Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, now, how cute is that? How cute is that? Now that's gonna bug me. So what I'm gonna do right now while I've got you guys on here, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take some of that vanilla paint and I'm going to go ahead and coat it around the top because I can't stand it. <laughs> I can't stand it. I want you guys to see how cute this is going to be without worrying about what that looks like as if it wasn't fixed. Um, and I can dry it real quick with my heat tool so that we can put the lid right back on there. I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way to the top. I want it to be a finished piece. I should take it all the way to the top. So that's what we're going to do. So lesson learned there, if you do this technique and um, want to create your set, take your black all the way to the top, take your vanilla color all the way to the top. Now guess what? You could totally make a little Christmas set of these and make your stars red uh, or something like that or make make your under layer red. Yeah, you totally could. Where'd that cinnamon go? I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this a little bit with some cinnamon since we don't have... Uh, any crackle up here that cinnamon will kind of hide a little bit of any kind of imperfections <laughs> in the paint finish if you know what I mean so um, and things are kind of technically a little bit grungier at the top and the bottoms anyway so this will kind of blow off any excess it'll give us a nice little color to the top of that it did oh it's crackled look at the back right there where that crackle that not cool yes I love it I love it I love it okay now to finish this off you would want to go ahead and put a layer of Mod Podge over this that'll protect your paint keep it from chipping off okay but I kind of want to ex I want to experiment with something real quick there's like an uh oh <laughs> what's she gonna do all I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a little bit of coffee grunge over the top of this and I'm going to experiment on the back side because I don't know what this is going to look like. I did give it a good shake. Uh, I'm going to go along the bottom here. Okay, I kind of like this. I'm going around the bottom and I'm giving it a little bit of a grubby look um, at the bottom because the jars you know are kind of dirtier at the bottom. Okay. Now, it, it looks really um, more intense on camera <laughs> than it does in person. So I've put that on. I am going to kind of go ahead and dab it off a little bit so that it's not super um, drastic is what I'm trying to get at. Okay, it just kind of warmed up the bottom a little bit. The camera, the, it keeps wanting to, to shine it out. The lights are too bright. And I'm going to go around the, the rim as well. And I think I'm even okay if I get a few drips of this at the rim. Let's see. Let's see if we can create some drips. I'll get a little bit of suds, but I need some drips. Okay. Let's see what we got going on. Come on. Oh, yeah. We're getting a little bit of drip. Tap it a little bit. All right. That look, that's pretty strong. That might be too strong for you. So take a wet wipe, take a wet paper towel, damp paper towel, and just dab. And I'm going to kind of take it, and I'm just kind of like you would like a, if you were dabbing a like sponge to get like a paint technique. I just want a little bit of subtleness. I don't want it to be super intense. So that's what I'm doing. The coffee grunge without the intensity, I guess, is what we're going for. I like the color, just not so intense, not full force. Ooh, ooh, love that. Okay, let's do a quick dry. And then I would go over it with a, a spray coat of sealer. Um, you could go over it with a layer of Mod Podge. Um, anything that would seal those colors in and that would protect your paint surface as well all right so i'm going to let that dry right here and while that's drying what i'm going to do move this out of the way this little lid it's a little bit plain for me so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a little bit of this coffee grunge i'm going to coat it and then let it dry it has cinnamon in it, 
So if I can get a little bit of cinnamon speckle on there, I'm good. I just don't want it to look super new. I am going up around my knob a little bit. I'm not going to coat the top of my knob. Okay. I'll probably what I'll do is take this same little grungy uh, wet wipe and I'll just dapple the top of that. Oh, like that. I like that a lot. Okay. It just kind of grunged it up a little bit so that it's not quite so just straight black. <laughs> it's not super solid. Thank you, Miss Gail. I'm so excited. You're loving it. Yes, yes, Miss Mary. I was, I was hoping, I was hoping and hoping that it would turn out, but I've never tried it, so I didn't really know how it was going to go. <laughs> didn't really know. I see I missed a spot right there. All right. That'll dry, and that'll give us some little cinnamon goodies, sprinkle goodies. They're just really subtle. They're not like so, uh, you can see a little bit there. Some of it's dried, some of it's not. Um, but after it dries, it'll have more of a good solid finish appearance to it. Um, but we need to let that dry. Really good. Now, under your knob, I would probably recommend to put a little bit of E6000 under that knob. Uh, not to just rely totally on... Um, the hot glue especially if you're making this as a set I'm making sure this is dry before I start grabbing on it <laughs> uh, not making it um, you want it to be a, a real good solid looking coordinated set so that's what I would do is to do all jars the same do one first see how you like it and uh, you can learn from your mistakes like we did today <laughs> And then, if you like it, you can move on to your next piece, okay? So, I'm going to use a little bit of cheesecloth here. Let me tear or cut this off here. I really wish I had a little set of homespun, you guys. I just don't have it. I just don't have it. All right. So, I would have a three-piece little set. So, we're going to use a little piece of cheesecloth here. Just for the lack of better options right at this very moment. Let's see. I want it offset a little bit. Tie this around and make a little knot. Okay, I got it a little bit long. Now, how cute would three of these be together? Put these on a little tiered tray, put them on a little um, cake stand, a little wooden riser. Oh, so cute. You could even add a little hang tag if you wanted. I'm going to have to get me some homespun, you guys. <laughs> some homespun would look darling. Golly, I love that. I love the way the grunge over that crackle and over that vanilla color that we mixed up, how that all coordinates in the black coming through the crackle and the black at the top. Amazing. <laughs> Stay tuned. We do have another crafter coming up right now over in the Craft on the Clock group. Go say hey to Miss Tracy from Scrappy's Rustics. Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful rest of your day.